My next guest has written a brand new book called Deep Kindness, a revolutionary guide for the way we think, talk, and act in kindness. Author Houston Kraft is joining us via Zoom to talk about what kindness really means. Thanks for joining us, man. Good morning, Dr. Ian. How are you? <laughs> good, good, good. So in a time where people are kind of scared and nervous and so many uncertainties, how can people actually practice uh, making kindness a habit? The frustrating research on kindness is that when anxiety and fear and narcissism, when those things increase, things like empathy and kindness decrease. And obviously we're experiencing a world where there's a lot more of all of those things, which makes kindness even harder. So one of my favorite practices uh, is sort of inspired by my friend Dexter Davis, who says, we're not human beings, we're human becomings. Mm. And I love this practice uh, that I, I feel like our culture tells us we're supposed to be doing things all the time. We have to-do lists that will literally write down things we've already done just for the satisfaction of checking them off. And so my, uh, my wish for people, my practical strategy for people is on top of their to-do list, write out a one item to-be list every day. I want to be kind. I want to be grateful. I want to be present. And then give yourself an actual five minute practical thing that you can check off each day to make sure that you are prioritizing who we want to be alongside all the stuff that we have to do. Yeah. And you say to keep up with the practice of kindness, there's some things you can do. In fact, in your book, you have a 30 act starter plan. Take us through a, a few of them. First, you say specificity is important to creating kindness. Why? Why is that? Why is specificity so important? Specificity is all about listening and it's about understanding that when I receive something that is specific to what I need, it's going to make a much more profound difference. And so the 30 Act Starter Plan is just trying to help us understand who we have the most access to and then curating or tailoring our kindness towards that person. So if I start with myself, right, I have to start with self-compassion, self-care and move outwards. Okay, then who do I live with? And then who's my family? And then who's my best friend? And then my acquaintance and then the stranger and then the grocery store clerk. And as I move farther outwards, those people need different things. You also say um, that consistency is important. Um, how does consistency matter when you're practicing kindness? The research would tell us a really scary stat that 45% of our day is built on routine or habit. Half of our life is on wow. autopilot. Wow. And so I think about if 45% of my day is habitual, how do I shift even 1%? or ask myself the question, what percent of that 45% is designed to be kind if I say I care about that? Mm -hmm. Example I'd offer is my, my mom, I'm an only child, total mama's boy, and my mom wrote me a lunch note in my, my lunch every single day, kindergarten through 12th grade. Wow. And while each day that act might have only taken her two minutes, it's sort of the, um, the collection, right? The consistency over time that makes it one of the most profound actions of love in my life. And so. I would ask people to think about what's their 1% shift, right? What's that two minutes a day over time that allows you to become the thing we say we want to be? Our theme this season is take your power back. So this is really about taking your power back with kindness. So I appreciate you joining us today. Absolutely, my friend. Make it a great day. All right, you too.